Hello everyone. I'm very thankful that we were able to have this beautiful, this wonderful summer, summer camp starting from yesterday, last night. Uh, many people are with us here today. We are thankful to be able to share this word with you. We'll first of all open up our Bible to J Jeremiah chapter 31 from verse, from verse 31 to verse, verse 34. If you are there, I'll read it. Jeremiah chapter 31 from verse 31 to 34. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hands to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, they said, said the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no, ma no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Now know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. In the Old Testament of Jeremiah chapter 31, here it says that God is making a new covenant with the house of Israel and house of Judah. Here the new covenant, here the covenant stands for uh, the commandment, the first commandment. That's why they call it a covenant. The first covenant was saying that if we human beings, we keep, we observe them all, we'll be blessed. If you break them, we'll be cursed. That's what the, low, the first covenant was saying. But not even a single person was able to keep the law. So in the first covenant, it's called the first covenant is called the law of sin and death. See, law of sin and death. But when you read Jeremiah 31 verse 31, he talks about this new covenant. Through the first through the first covenant, which is the law, no one can receive the remission of sin and go to heaven because everybody has broken, everybody has violated the law, so they are they has to be cursed. Uh, so the second covenant that God made with us, God said, I'll put this law in their heart and I'll write them in their mind. In the first covenant, we were supposed to do it well and perform well so that we can be blessed. If not, we were supposed to be cursed. But in the second covenant, we being blessed or not, it's not up to me doing well or not. It's not up to me. But it depends on God whether He does it well or not. So depending on what God does and how God does it, we can be blessed, either blessed or cursed. So the second covenant, the Bible says, I'll, I'll forgive their iniquity and I'll remember their sin no more. Who? It's not up to us to wash or forgive our sins, but God says it's it's God who will forgive our iniquity. Knowing this truth, spiritual life becomes so easy and happy. In fact, from my childhood, I went to church. But in 1962, when I turned ni 19 years old, until then I was going to church, but I was still sinner in my heart because it was difficult for me not to sin. It was difficult for me trying. But this new covenant, me committing sin or not, it, it, it did not depend on me. But the Bible says, I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more, said the Lord. In the first covenant, the first law, if we keep it well, we can be we can be blessed. If not, we will be cursed. So because of so in the first covenant, the commandment, if we judge man with the first covenant, not even a person, not even a single person can be blessed. So in order to make a new covenant through which we even we have sin can go to heaven. 
But regardless of me committing sin or not, but depending on what God has done for us, we'll go to heaven according to what He has done. Uh, my son went to the state. One day we went to Chicago from New York uh, by car. So my son, my wife, and my daughter. It was too long, and it's it's not been long since my ch my bro my son got the driver's license. I told my son to drive a little bit, so I let my son drive, and I fell asleep. And all of a sudden, my son began to wake me up, saying, "Oh, dad, dad, dad!" We were close to Chicago then. Why? Oh, father, dad, it's raining too much. I can't rain well. I can't drive well. Okay, you. You stop. You park the car on the sideway, and we put the we put we, we, the, he parked the car and he got out of the car and I sat down in the driver's seat and I began to drive. I began to drive. Although I'm old, but back then I drove well, and now my son can drive well. But back then, because my son was young, he was not good at driving. So time to time it would rain. So my son was so, like, perplexed. It's raining too much. So I can't drive. He said. Okay, you, so you put the emergency emergency light and you park the car on the sideway. I'll drive. Because I was I I'm experienced. I was experienced driver. So w it was the same way, but I because I'm better driver than my, because I was better driver than my son. I could drive the I could drive the car. I told m I told my son to turn on the emergency light. I told her told him oh I'll drive. So uh, according to the law it depends on us if you do it well we go to heaven if you do it wrong we go to hell. But according to the new covenant it does not depend on us. But this new covenant, it does not depend on us doing well. Uh, if God does it well, we can go to heaven by what he, God has done well. So we used to recite Ten Commandments, and we used to strive hard to live a sincere and good life. But no one could, no one can go to heaven by doing that because everybody has everybody has violated the law. That's why for, uh, for Jeremiah chapter thirty-one, verse thirty-one, here it says, "Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah." Before then, I thought I I was smart and I was good. I was hardworking, so I thought I had to do something to be to be to 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 be saved. But after believing in Jesus, I could see that it was not done by me. But no matter how bad I may be, no matter how maladroit I may be, but if God is God does it, then it doesn't depend. It does not. It doesn't matter even if I'm not good at it. Last year, after coming back from Africa. I caught malaria and I was not feeling well. And my and our elders of the church they they wanted me to be they wanted me to go to hospital and see a doctor and I went to and I had my body di diagno diagnosed. Actually from my childhood my, my body was not that healthy. In 1987 That summer, from starting from spring, I was not feeling well. I had I had stomach ulcer. A stomach ulcer. It 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 hurts so bad because 
The doctor told me to chew. Uh, if I take a spoonful of rice, I have to chew it hundred times. But still, even if I drink water, I will still have a diarrhea. But then I had to go. I had to preach the word as a speaker. Get in the in different in Bible seminars. So if I if I if I participate in a Bible seminar to preach there, I'll I'll I should have to be there at least for four days. And as a guest speaker, if I tell them that I have this issue, they, I thought they were gonna be they were gonna be worried about it. So I didn't tell them that I have this issue, but I couldn't eat properly. So for three months, because of the stomach ulcer, no matter what I eat, even if I eat porridge, even if I drink water, I still had diarrhea. It was really driving me crazy. Um, nowadays, we have good medicines to treat this, so it's good. But at the, at, in those days, we didn't have good and anti-acid so it was not being cured easily so I lost seven kilos although I was not on diet and I I was weighing 70 kilos but I lost seven kilos I was weighing only 63 kilos and one morning I woke woke up in the morning and I began to pray to God God, my, my, my stomach hurts so bad. In the summertime, we have many programs like Laugh World Camp. So we have many, many programs. So I thought to myself, with this body, I wouldn't be able to handle all the, all the events that we are supposed to do. God, please heal my stomach. I pray to God. When I finished praying, certain heart arose from my heart. I remembered one passage in the Bible. It was Mark 11 verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. This was too, this, this was too, too easy. If I pray, you know, praying is not difficult and after praying if I just believe that God will answer my prayer it will be it will be done I will have it the Bible says there was nothing as easy as this so in the morning I pray to God God my stomach hurts please heal me and I believe that I was all healed and I I pray to God God I'm healed I'm thankful so I pray to, I pray to him and Bible says I will have it So what I did was that day I went for breakfast there were some guests in my house so my wife prepared a lot of food on the table but before going for breakfast I thought about it yeah, now even if I eat, have some porridge, I, I will have a diarrhea. You know, Koreans, they love kimchi. They can't live without kimchi. And for the past three months, I couldn't eat kimchi at all. Why couldn't I eat kimchi? Well, it was because my stomach hurt so bad. But now that I believe that I'm healed, then I, 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 then I have to eat kimchi, right? And as I thought over about it, I thought if I eat kimchi at this state, I will have a lot of tr stomach pr trouble. Because the, the doctor had said my stomach was like my stomach was like a thin wet paper. It, will, it can easily explode. If it explodes, I will die within 24 hours. But I remembered what the Bible said. The Bible was telling me that the Bible was telling me that what things soever you desire when you when you pray believe that ye receive them and ye shall have it have them so if i so i pray to god for the healing and if i want if i believe that i'm healed then i have to eat kimchi if i believe that i'm healed because so until now if i didn't eat kimchi it was because my stomach hurt if i believe that i'm healed then i have to eat kimchi but with this stomach if I put kimchi, I thought I was going to die. But I thought to myself, 
Oh, I don't believe in God then, because the Bible says if I pray for it, I should believe that I have it. If I believe that I, I have it already, I have, the, I, have the, I have the answer of God for my prayer, then I have to believe that I was healed, so I, can eat, I must be able to eat kimchi, so I went, to, I went to have breakfast. And there were many guests in my house back then, so my wife prepared a lot of food on the table. And at one corner, she prepared a little bit of porridge and soy, uh, soy sauce, beef. But I, pu I put them away, but I brought a bowl of rice from the table. And I, and I said to my, and I thought to myself, I'm all healed. And I ate kimchi, I ate uh, radish kimchi, and I ate rice. Uh, I, when I was eating, my wife was serving food. And when she saw me eating all those food, she was surprised. What are you going to do? And I told her, you know, I'm all healed. Don't worry about it. And I looked at my wife and she looked at me back and she went away. And after finishing my bowl of rice, when I put down my spoon, my stomach began to hurt. Oh, and I couldn't hold it. And I went out. I'm sorry, but I went to the restroom. And I had a diarrhea. Oh, my stomach. Oh, my stomach. At one corner of my heart, Oh, you really want to die, huh? You, your stomach is not good, but you ate kimchi, you ate radish kimchi. You are not, you are out of it. You must be out of your mind. You have faith? No way. No. I pray to God for healing, and I believe that God was going to heal me, so my, I'm healed. But this, but the fight began again. If you're all healed, if you are healed, as you say, then you must have, then you shouldn't have diarrhea. Then, but you are, you, your stomach hurt, and you have diarrhea. Are you healed? No, you are not healed. Yeah, that's true. If I, my stomach is, hurt, if my stomach is healed, I shouldn't have stomach ache. Oh, this is confusing. I'm healed. But at one point, I thought, when Jesus went to the uh, house of Jairus, Jairus' daughter was dead. Was he, she was only 12 years old. And the fa family of the daughter was, the, uh, the family of Jairus was all crying. Then Jesus said, no, don't cry. She's, she's not dead. She's asleep. <laughs> You know, no matter how foolish the person may be, is the person who, is the person unable to distinguish someone who is asleep to someone who is dead? You know, there is a big difference between a person who is dead and a person who is asleep. The person who is asleep, you can feel his pulse, because a person who is do who is dead, his pulse wouldn't beat, and you know, his his, his body must be cold. You know, you can tell who is dead and who is asleep. But as I heard. As I heard, as, as I remembered the story, I could see that in our eyes, the daughter of Jairus was dead. She was not breathing and the pulse was not beating and her body was all cold. But Jesus said, don't cry. She's not dead, but she's asleep. In our eyes, the daughter of Jairus was dead. But in Jesus' eyes, she was alive. She was asleep. So if I believe that I'm all healed, if I believe I'm not supposed to have a diarrhea, I'm not supposed to have the stomach ache, but now I still have diarrhea, I still have a stomach ache, am I healed? Oh no, I'm not healed. If I'm healed, I shouldn't have stomach ache. That's uh, when I remembered the word. Yes, I'm, my stomach hurt. I'm, I still have a diarrhea, but in Jesus' eyes, I must be healed. If I'm, if that's the case, then I'm healed. I believed. The Bible says it will be done as I prayed. Bible says that Bible says that whatsoever, what, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you have you received them and you shall have them. Yeah, I'm all healed. 
so that morning I thought of to that much and we kind of had ceasefire and for the lunch I had another bowl of rice I ate kimchi and I ate rice cake uh, radish kimchi again and I went to and I went to the bathroom again to have diarrhea oh my stomach my stomach in the evening someone invited me over for uh, dinner and he and we went to Hayat Hotel it was a bu there was a bu uh, buffet there and when I was getting in there I thought I was I had, I, I had a stomach ache so I thought to myself I should maybe just have some porridge but then I rem remembered no I'm healed so I ate a lot and my stomach was all full and I came home driving but the following morning I didn't have diarrhea and the following day, when I when I when I opened my eyes, I could feel that my my stomach was all healed. So within twenty four hours, I was all healed. So in my eyes, I was not healed because I had a stomach ache and I had diarrhea. So I was not healed in my eyes. But in the word of Jesus, if I believe, it will be done as I, as I believe, the Bible said. Although I had diarrhea in my eyes, but I believe that I was healed. Bible says if I believe it, Bible says that I will have it. And I was healed as I believed. Before then, my stomach was not good. I still remember. In 1987, sometime I went to Germany, but I was not always feeling well. And I remember brother, I asking brothers to you know, hit my bag because I was not feeling well, feeling okay. Whenever I, before then, I couldn't eat um, food made of flour and I couldn't eat things that are sour. But starting from 1987, 97, 2007, 2017, this year 2020 right so for the past couple decades my stomach got a lot better God you know when I when I was in uh, when I was in the military service when I was doing military service we did the training we had training but I was uh, I, I, was not, I was not physically big I was small and we did we did some uh, exercises there were certain exercises that are really really hard and sometimes the officer called us then we had to run toward him but then I kind of fainted back then so that's when I realized that I, I was my heart my heart was not well so I was uh, 22 back then I rested for the couple of days and I felt I, I got better when I turned 50, 50 years old, I could vividly feel that my, my heart was not normal and I had a hard time with it. In 1999, there was, there was, a, there was an expert specialist in heart and I was I went to the States and that doctor examined my body whole day long. But he examined my body and then he said, my, I can't be healed. Back then we were building our mission center in Daejeon. It was eight story buildings. There were brothers who were working like up, like a roof. But when I looked at them, I couldn't breathe normally. I, my heart was beating so bad. And I then I thought maybe I will last only two, three months. Two, three months. It was 1999 in March. After Bible seminar in New York, I went to Peru, Lima for the Bible seminar. But from the morning, I felt uh, so, I felt not wet at all in, in New York. 
and I discussed with my wife, do I have to go to Peru Lima in this state or should I go back to Korea? But I made up my heart, even if I will have to die, let me die in Peru Lima, not here. So back then we had a Bible seminar in a sports complex in Peru Lima. And I was sitting behind the podium and the back then missionary Yi Yong Jae who, was, who, is de, who, who passed away now, he did the MC but as I was sitting behind, my heart was beating so bad. So when he was doing MC, I went, I went down and there was a waiting room there and I waited there for a couple more minutes and I kind of took a rest and I came back up to the podium. And after the sermon, Missionary Yi Yong Jae kind of shouted. He kind of made an announcement. Oh, if among you, if you have AIDS or any disease, you can come, if you want to come for prayer, you can, you can you come to the front. And about 200 people came to the front and I was not feeling well at all. And that day, I almost, I almost died as I was praying for 200 people. After the Bible seminar, each, after each session, I had to go to, the play, go to my resting place and I had to take a rest, lying on the bed. And at the end of the Bible seminar, we were going back, so we went to the airport. And our brothers and sisters, they, they came to escort me in the, in the airport. And they were all thinking this will be the last time our pastor park visiting our country. So it was April 1999. So in 1999, we were organizing our summer camp in Yongdong Pine Field. First evening, I was sleeping. I lay down in, the, in my tent because I wanted to sleep. For, from our uh, headquarters to the place where we organized Sunday school, it was about five kil 500 meters. So if you make a round trip to the point, it will be about one, one kilometer in distance. But as I was lying on, I, as I was lying on the floor because I wanted to sleep, I, I re realized that that day I made four round trip to the point where we were having Sunday school. That makes it four kilometers. I calculated again and again, but I was sure it was four times. So it means I walked four kilometers. I couldn't believe it. Then I realized, oh, then I'm healed. I must be healed then. As I, as I could believe it, the following morning I woke up and I began to jog. And at the end of the summer, at the end of the summer camp on the pine field, I was living in Daejeon back then. In a, next to our church, there was Sodejeon uh, High School, girls' high school, and there was this uh, sports field. Uh, one lap was about three hundred meters, and in the beginning, I couldn't run the first lap, but I kept running, so that's how I could run one kilometer, two kilometer, three kilometers, four kilometers, five, seven kilometers. I bought light sneakers, and even even when I go to the, we go to Africa, I began to run. Even in even when I went to Russia for Bible study, and I run there, and when I sweat, I felt so cool, and I took shower afterwards. Now, God healed my heart. And Elder Huang, when he check when he checks my pulse, he says, "I I have one of the best heart in our church." God, God does a lot of work in my life. If you want me to keep saying talking about this, even if I have to talk all night long, I won't be able to finish all the stories. After receiving salvation, after receiving forgiveness of sin, this happened. I, me I, I mentioned this many times, but electricity passes through electric wire. So we don't make electricity, but from the power station, they make electricity. And if the electric wire is connected, it, the electricity will come to your house, it will run your washing machine, it will run your refrigerator. So the electricity passes, flows through electric wire. And the work of God, uh, the work power of God flows from heart to heart. Tonight, all of you who are participating in our summer camp, uh, you are total, you are, there are a total of 400,000 people participating in our program online, worldwide. Amongst 
400,000 400, people, no matter who you may be, as you read the Bible, and if you come to discover heart of Jesus in the Bible, and if your heart is connected to the heart of Jesus, that's also online, but it's a line where your, our hearts are connected to one another. So when your heart becomes one with Jesus, Jesus will come into your heart, and from that moment on, no matter what problem you may have, they will become Jesus' problem, and He will He will work in your He will work in your life. Let me ask you a question. You, you can answer if if you could please answer me. I can see your face on my screen. Do you all see? Do you all hear me well? Okay, if you if you hear me well, raise up your hand, please. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, put down your hands, please. Please listen to me carefully. Uh, about 400,000 people were sitting down here today. If your heart and Jesus' heart are connected, if your heart and Jesus' heart becomes online, you know, if your heart becomes one with Jesus, that what that's what it means by believe in Je believing in Jesus. And when the electricity does not flow, if you check the wire, you can see that maybe it's not plugged in. If you plug in, plug plug it, if you plug it into the outlet, then the electricity will flow one another. So when your heart becomes one with the heart of Jesus, from then on, something wonderful will happen in your life. Until 1962. I sinned a lot. I sinned many times. Until 1962, as I read the Bible, the blood of Jesus shed on the cross. That's when I realized that the blood of Jesus shed on the cross washed my sins away. So, as I was reading the Bible, the Bible was telling me that when Jesus died on the cross, he was not simply crucified on the cross, but he was crucified for the sins of the world. But that's true, but from my personal point of view, Jesus died for the sins of Pastor Oxy Park as well. Is it correct? If that's true, no matter what sin I may have committed, I am a sinner. But when Jesus died on the cross, Jesus died for my sin's sake. If that's true, then is my sin washed or not? If you think our sins are washed, nod your head, please. Yeah, nod your head up, up and down. If you don't think your head is your sins are washed, nod your head side, left to right. Uh, no, I see no one, uh, no one is dis disagreeing, but everyone agrees that our sins are washed. So everyone here, they ha you have faith. So in our eyes, we are sinners. Yeah, you know, I, I, I kept, I, I started this yesterday, since yesterday, but in the Bible, the Bible says there is no one righteous, no one are one. There's a passage saying this in Romans chapter three, verse ten. There's a passage saying there's no one righteous, no not one. But there's a passage in the Bible saying Noah was a just man in Genesis chapter 6 verse 9. Noah was a just man, the Bible said. So though there's a passage saying there's no one righteous, no not one, but there's also a passage saying Noah was a just man. And in Romans chapter 1, In Romans, Romans, for Romans 1 verse 10, he says that the righteous man shall live by faith. In James 5, 
James 5 verse 16 there it says that uh, confess your fault uh, it says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much So in the Bible, there are stories where the sinner become righteous after receiving forgiveness of sin. In 2012, I went to Ghana in Africa and we organized IF World Camp there. And about three, th two, three thousand youth they participated in our camp. And in our IF World Camp organized in Ghana, the First Lady of Ghana came to give congratulatory message. When you have World Camps like this, because the scale of the camp is big, uh, rarely the President participate in our camp. Rarely. And sometimes, uh, first ladies, they participate in our camp. Sometimes, ministers, they participate in our camps. But that day was... So, IF World Camp, it, the event lasts about two, three hours. But after giving the congratulatory message, uh, the first lady sat next to me and after then we had music programs and after music program I was supposed to preach and until the end of the program she was there and the program ended so this is just photos of me sitting with the first lady of Ghana so she was she's the first lady and until the end of the at the end of the program the first lady said uh, said to me pastor there's something that I want to tell you. And I talked about how we can receive forgiveness of sin. And when and the first lady told me that that the first the president is not feeling well. And she said, Pastor Park, could you please come and pray for our president? And I said, Okay, I sh okay, I will pray for your uh, I pray for the president. Does the president have to, have to come here? No. I'll come over. I'll come to your place to see the president. I'm 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 healthy. So she asked me my number. So I, I gave her the number of our missionary in Ghana, Pastor Cho Gyeong Won. And as soon as he, she went, she gave us a phone call saying, I'll, I'll send you a car to pick you up in your place at 9 a.m. in the morning. So I called Soprano Choi Emi and Park Jin Young to get ready to go to see the president the following day and I told them to prepare two Ghanaian songs and in when nine around nine at nine ten the police motorcycles with, uh, uh, with the first lady came with her car and there was some other cars that came with her so in the first car was the first lady and the two uh, members of the Gwachas Choir in the second car, me and the missionary of Ghana. And the third car was the bodyguards were there. So we went to see the president. The name of the president was John Atamils. He is of an age with me. So our our choir members, Sopano Chemi and Pak Jin Young, uh, we, we, we went to presidential palace many times. And that day, uh, our choir Sopranos, they sang Ghanaian songs. So the president heard heard this. He was listening to the song, leaning against his chair. And after the song, the doctor said, uh, the the president told me that my personal doctor is treating me, but I'm not getting any better. So um, I have this specialist treating me, but apparently I'm not getting any better. The president said. So the president said, I don't think I'll, I wouldn't be able to last one more week. Although 
or the becoming a president and dying as a president is not a bigger deal because I've been up to I've been I was able to come this high. But this president of Ghana, John Mills, he was a very sincere Christian. Unless there is anything special, he would go to church on Sundays. It was one of the, what is was one of the most faithful Christian and believers in Ghana. But Uh, the president, he said, I think I'm going to die today or tomorrow. But because I'm also a human being, I sinned in my life. But I haven't received the forgiveness of sin. There are many people going to church here in Korea. But if you ask them where, why they're going to church, they would say, in order to believe in Jesus and receive forgiveness of sin, that's why they go to church, they would say. But if you ask them if they really have received forgiveness of sin, most of them, they, they will say, no, they haven't. Why? Because they don't know the exact way of receiving forgiveness of sin. Certain people, they will say, "Oh, in the middle of the night, I was, I was, I was sleeping, but I, but all, of, all of a sudden, my runny nose came out, and I began to cry, and tear came, came out of my eyes. So maybe I'm saved." Some people say they all of a sudden they, they felt so, you know, spiritually, spiritually overwhelmed. Maybe that's why I'm saved. So President, President Jonah Tamils, although I had, I had met, I had met many president. But he was the he was the first president that I've met before death. He was very honest. He was a very good one in my eyes. The president, he said, although I'm a president, I think I'm gonna die any minute from now. But I don't have, uh, but I still have my sins. So I'm a sinner. If I die, I don't think I'll be able to go to heaven. That's my, that's my worries. Many people today, they go to church. They go, they go to church on Sunday. They do services and they give offerings. They do good things. But without washing their sins exactly, they leave as sinners for many, many years. There are many people living that kind of life. But if we believe in Jesus, people say, if I confess my sins, my sin can be forgiven. That's what people say. But even after believing in Jesus for 10, 20 years, they are still sinners. Just like the president of Ghana, if you don't receive the exact freedoms of sin, you will become sinner. So people who are facing death, they would have these worries, they would have this pain in their hearts. That's clear, that's obvious. They don't know how they can receive remission of sin by the blood of Jesus. So they have the sin left in their hearts. Tonight, as you are participating in our camp and as you are listening to the word, if you have not received forgiveness of sin yet, if you face death, maybe when you turn 70 or 80, you'll be very afraid to face death. You may, tr you may tremble so hard before your death. Maybe many people would tremble, they will be so worried and afraid and scared before their death. Although they read the Bible, 
Because they don't know exact path of receiving salvation in the Bible. Although they know that they have sinned and they pray for forgiveness of sin, they do that, but because they don't know how their sins are washed exactly. That's why they, they keep praying for forgiveness of sins, but without receiving forgiveness of sin, when they face that in their late in their late days, how sad, how stuffy they would feel. That's so. Um, I feel so sorry for them. That's so pitiful. In 1962, I I discovered how we can receive forgiveness of sin in the Bible, and I was able to receive forgiveness of sin. I didn't do anything for my remission of sin. So when I look at the Bible, the Bible was explaining correctly how we can receive forgiveness of sin. So no matter who I may stand before, I can tell them that I'm saved, I'm, I have received forgiveness of sin, my sins are washed as white as snow, so I can stand before God at any time. And no, whenever I face difficulties, whether I had heart issue, whether I had stomach issue, I could see God helping me at any time. I could experience it many times. In the Old Testament, in the, in the Old Testament there is a passage saying, it's not that God cannot hear that He did not save us. It's not that His hands are short not to save us, but it was it was because of the sin that divided us from God. But it was our sins that covered us covered His face so that He may not hear us. So because the sin becomes this barrier against between God and us. If we have sinned, God cannot listen to our God cannot hear our prayer, we cannot go to heaven. No matter how much offerings we may give to God. But with sin we cannot go to heaven. We have to receive forgiveness of sin. There are people who want to receive forgiveness of sin and who pray every morning. They go to Sarakshan, Changgesan, and they hold on to the pine tree branch and they cry and they shout, Lord! Although they pray, pray to God for forgiveness of sin a lot, though if they don't, if they do not know how their sins can be forgiven. Although they may sing the hymn together saying uh, that through His blood our sins are washed away, but they may ha still have sin, in le sin left in their hearts. And because they have sin in their heart, God may not be able to work in their heart. And no matter who they may be, if they, if they don't receive forgiveness of sin, the remission of sin, they cannot go to heaven. President John Atamils By the grace of God, that day, I met him. But honestly, although he was president, but although he was a president, he said, although I'm a president, I still have sin in my heart. He was a very honest one. And because he was facing death, and I, and I asked him this question, Mr. President, How did you know? How did you come to know that you are a sinner? Then the president told me, Am I not a sinner because I sin? I told him, Mr. President, that's not so. The president was stunned. In which country, in what, where in, where in the world is there any country where the, where the convict himself judges, judges his own sin? Here in Ghana, 
Does the criminal, does the convict himself, does he judge his own sin, saying, oh, me, I deserve three years of imprisonment, so I'll stay in uh, prison for three years. No, they don't do that. It's not up to the convict, it's not up to the prisoner to judge his own sin, but it's, for the, it's up to judge to judge their sins. Amen? Amen. I asked him, I asked, asked him, so imagine you may have you may have committed sin that you you consider them to be sin, but that's not what is important. But what is more important is it's according to the judgment according to the judgment of the judge that they will judge your sin. And God is our judge. And in the Bible, there is his final verdict of God as the final judge. Do you want to read his final verdict about your sin? Did you get? To, did you have, have you ever get got to read this? Read it before? I said no. There is there is this verdict of your sin. Where is it in the Bible? It's in the Bible. Do you want to read the final decision of your sin in the Bible? Yes, he, he said he wanted to see it. So, I opened the book of Romans and I read it for him. Romans 3, verse 23 and verse 24. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That means God is the judge. But by grace, it's not that we did something good, it's not that we paid something for our sins, but by grace, God judged us to be righteous. Is it correct? I didn't know that it was the final decision. But one day, as I had a counseling with a lawyer, and I explained this, explained this remission of sin to the lawyer, the lawyer said, told me, Oh, pastor, Oh, this is the decision of the judge. The way it is written is it's, it's written as a decision of the judge. For all, for all have sinned and come short, 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 come short glory of God. Being justified by through, freely by His grace through the redemption that is in that is in Christ Christ Jesus. So, all of us we have all sinned, so we cannot come to the glory of God. In, but Christ. He was punished, punished in our place. He redeemed us, and through His redemption, Jesus was punished in our place. So there is nothing left, nothing more left for us. So that is why God called us righteous, and we are justified. And we are justified by God, and God called us righteous. Now, when God look at looks at you. If he says you are righteous, then is he righteous? If he calls you righteous, then are you righteous or sinners? Please answer. If God calls you righteous, are you righteous or sinner? If you think you are still a sinner, even after God calling you righteous, raise up your hand. If God calls you righteous, then he is the judge. Imagine you, you commit a certain crime and the, your, the, the judge sentenced you to 10 years of imprisonment. But if instead of giving you final judgment of 10 years of imprisonment, if it's just say you're not guilty, then you're not guilty. No matter what sin you may have committed, but if the judge, God, if says you are not guilty, then you are not guilty. But in Romans 3 verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and come short, short of the glory of God. For if you see verse 23, we are all sinners. But if you read verse 24, 
God calls us that we are righteous. Is it correct? Is it correct? Why did God call us righteous? Because Christ was punished in our place. So there's no more punishment left for us. That is why God called us righteous. Amen. Do you understand? We have all sinned. We are surely sinners. But why did God call us righteous? It's true, we have sinned. But because Jesus was crucified in our place and He was punished in our shoes, so our sins are all washed. That is why God calls us righteous. Amen? Everyone, if God says you are righteous, then are we righteous or are we sinners? Here I'm, uh, I can see you on the screen. If God is, if God is punished, if God washed our sins away, then are we righteous or sinners? If you think you're righteous, raise your hand, please. Raise your hand, please, up high. Thank you very much. Okay, put down your hands. If you think you're still a sinner, please raise your hand. You may not know the law, but one thing that we know is that God is the judge. The judge declares that we are righteous. Didn't he declare that we are righteous? You know, that's what Romans 3 verse 23 and 4, 24 and 23 talks about. The punishment that we were supposed to receive, Jesus was punished in our place. He was crucified on the cross. When God sees us, he would declare that we are righteous. And we are justified. Romans 3 verse 23. Let's read it all together. Verse 23 and 24. Loud, loudly. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God, didn't God call, didn't God say that you're all made righteous because He was punished, He was crucified for your sins? If that's what is if that's what is said, then we have to also say that we are righteous because God said it. God is telling us that we are righteous because we are, our sins are washed. But can we still call ourselves sinner? Can we? No, we can't. In 1962, I was going to church. I sinned a lot, and I I was sure that I was going to end up in hell. But as as I was reading the Bible. If God says I'm righteous, th then I'm righteous. I accepted it as it is. Amen? I accepted it as it is. I accepted the word. Although in my thought it was saying I was a sinner, but in the word of God it was saying that I was righteous. So, was, so if, even if it doesn't work out, it's not my fault, but it's, it's God to God. If God says that we are righteous, then we are righteous. Today we read Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 to verse 34. This is what it is talking about. I would like to explain this more in detail tomorrow, but if God says we are righteous, then we are righteous as long as He is the judge. No matter how much sin we may sin, if the judge, judge declares that we are not guilty, then we are not guilty. That is why the judge is important. 
the judge is, God is our judge, and we sinned. We cannot call this righteous after we sinned. So when we sinned, God did not just leave us like that, but Jesus dying on the cross, but seeing that Jesus died on the cross, now we are called righteous. So who? So through the death of Jesus, our sins are washed. This is what we believe today. Today, there are people who are going to church but who still call themselves sinners. But the word sinner, if you know that Jesus died on the cross and washed our sins away, but it's still if you are a sinner, then that only means that you are saying that Jesus died in vain. So that day, for about an hour, I talked to the president of Ghana. The president, he was not feeling well. So I prayed for him and I came back to the camp campsite. But four hours later, our first lady called me and said that our president has, in order to get the eternal rest, he was now called by the Lord and she told us that. That president, four hours before he passed away, he believed that his sins were forgiven by the blood of Jesus. Before then he was going to church. He knew that he, he sinned, but he didn't know how sins how his sins were washed. That's why he was worried and he was not feeling okay in his heart. But that day, after listening to the gospel, he could joyfully go into peace. Loving folks, just like our president of jo President Jonah Tamils, we have sinned. But on the cross, Jesus paid the wages of sin. So in God's eyes, we are all righteous. God, the judge, he says that we are all righteous. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God says we are justified. We are justified, the Bible says. If God says we are justified, then we are justified. But Satan will tell you, no, you are sinners. So those who believe in the voice of Satan, but those who believe in the Word of God, that we are made righteous, that is a difference. And those who believe like the latter, they are having the true faith and their sins can be washed. Throughout this week, during the summer camp, I would like to talk about this word so that we could have the assurance of your salvation, assurance of the remission of sins. So don't look at yourself. But as, as the judge, although we may look sinners in our eyes, he cannot call us sinner if we are sinner. If he cannot, he cannot call us righteous when we are sinner. So that's why after having washed our sins away on the cross, he called us righteous. He made us perfectly righteous. I pray that you all believe like this and become one-hearted with God so that the amazing grace of God and blessings of God may come upon you. Let us pray. Loving, loving Father God, Jesus died on the cross not for any other reason. We were supposed to be punished for the sins that we have committed. But Jesus died in our place. He washed all our sins away. Father God, today many people that are going to church, although they say that Jesus died, Jesus also died for their sins, but still they are in sin and they cannot get out of the sin. We are not saved because of this because of the because of because of our deeds. But because Jesus died on the cross for our sins, that's that's when our sins are all washed. 
Let us all have this faith in the word about our assurance of salvation. Let us get let us get let us take our sins off and receive the blessings and grace of God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving us this seminar. We glorify you, Lord, for this camp. In Jesus' name, we all prayed. Amen. Thank you very much, everyone.